Just think if a woman is attacked by a ship and she is taken prisoner on an island about which no one knows. My name is Mobo. Welcome to Mobo Speaks, so let's listen to today's story. The story begins in a Singapore hotel where some soldiers were dancing with their wives. Everyone was very happy, then suddenly a loud explosion was heard from outside. And a man came inside and stopped the party. He told everyone that the Japanese soldiers have crossed the border and they can attack anytime. Soon all the women and children were seated in a sea ship which will take them to a safe place. And all the men were ready to face the Japanese. Everyone said goodbye to their families and all the women boarded the ship immediately. Everyone was given life jackets for their safety. The night passed comfortably but as soon as morning came, the Japanese fighter jets dropped missiles on their ship. Due to this attack, a riot broke out on the ship and many women and children lost their lives. The survivors boarded a lifeboat and went to the nearby Tapu. But Rosemary, Susan and Adrian were left in the water. The three poor women swam all day and finally reached the nearby Tapu. After this, they crossed a dense forest and by now they were completely tired. But they kept their spirits up by talking to each other. First of all, they noticed the Japanese soldiers who were riding a bicycle. Finally, the Japanese army captain Tanaka gave them a lift in his car. On the way, Adrian told the captain that it was not good to attack the women and children's ship. According to the Geneva Convention, women and children cannot be attacked in war. But the captain said that Japan never signed the Geneva Convention. When the three of them got down in a city, a Japanese soldier slapped Rosemary's cheek without talking. Then he dragged the three of them and took them among other people. It was found that the women and children who had survived in the lifeboat were brought here by the Japanese soldiers. Here, Susan saw her nurse friends. Seeing her nurse friends alive there, Susan was very happy. After this, the soldiers took them to the base of prisoners of war where prisoners from many countries were present. The next morning, the soldiers picked up all the prisoners. They also behaved badly with animals. The army colonel said that now they are all prisoners of the Japanese government and they will have to live according to their will. Then a woman tried to attack her, but the Japanese soldier grabbed her and beat her a lot. After this, the soldiers forced her to bow her head in front of the Japanese flag. After a while, a truck arrived there, which had Japanese soldiers eaten meat and vegetables. These prisoners had to eat the remaining food. All the women started talking to each other and they saw that there were women from many countries. After breakfast, they were made to work in the fields in the scorching sun all day. There was no toilet facility for women. No matter how tired someone was, they were not allowed to rest. Every day, they had to fill water to bathe the Japanese soldiers. At that time, the soldiers kept roaming around without clothes in front of them without any shame. This work was very difficult for those women, but they had to do all this out of helplessness. One of them spread the rumor that the other side of the hill has been kept as a prisoner. But no one believed her. Although Rosemary thought that maybe her husband was on the same side. A few weeks later, malaria spread among all the prisoners. Some of them died and some of them came to bed rest. The oldest of them, Mrs. Roberts, was also malaria. Even after the attack on the ship, she brought her pet dog with her. But some women in the camp were praying that. I wish Mrs. Roberts dies so that they can all kill her dog and eat it. This shows what a person can't do when he needs it. Now, because of the disease of so many people, there was shortage of medicines. So those women thought of giving their earrings to the soldiers and taking medicine. To do this, a Chinese woman named Wing got ready. She ran out of the camp at night and was successful in taking medicine by shooting arrows. But at the same time, some guards noticed her running away. Finally, she returned to the hut after saving her life with great difficulty. Then she gave that medicine to Mrs. Roberts, which gave her a lot of relief. But the next morning, Captain Tanaka got the news of this whole matter. He pulled the wing and brought it in front of everyone and burned it alive there. Seeing her burn, the rest of the women were shocked. That evening, Adrian was humming a tune when an old woman named Daisy started singing with him. They became very close friends with music. And the two decided to start an orchestra to entertain the rest of the prisoners. The two wrote songs in the book, but some women were stopping them out of fear of the Japanese. The next morning, Adrian and Daisy started the first practice of the orchestra. But at the same time, the soldiers came and destroyed the color. They beat the women by holding them because no one was allowed to play songs. 
but those women were not among those who gave up. They formed a small group and started practicing in quiet places. Gradually, they prepared a lot of songs. One day, the sergeant suddenly entered their hut and reached Daisy. He gave Daisy a piece of paper on which the names of many girls were written. The soldiers caught them and put them in a truck and took them with them. They all reached a bungalow where many Japanese officers lived. A man told them that they are being given a chance to improve their lives. If they are ready to be the guardians of these officers, they will get a bed, good food, and a room to live in. Hearing this, some women were furious. But some of them took the opportunity to live with the officers. Now many months had passed, but the war was not over. Gradually, many women died in the camp. Adrian asked Susan and her friends to join his orchestra. One day, Susan entered DR. Verstak's cabin and saw that she was pulling out a golden tooth from a corpse's mouth. At first, she thought that this doctor had committed a very bad act. But the truth was that the doctor used to give gold to the Japanese soldiers and arrange for medicines. The doctor also asked Susan to learn this work so that if she ever dies, there is someone who can save the prisoners. That night, when Adrian came out of the hut, a soldier caught him from behind. He was drunk and he wanted to take advantage of Adrian. But Adrian pushed him into the mud to save his honor. Then the rest of the soldiers came there and accused Adrian of attacking a soldier without talking. He was kept in a cage all night and in the morning, the soldiers took him to Captain Tanaka. The soldier lied to Tanaka that he touched Adrian only because he did not bow his head in front of the Japanese flag. When Adrian tried to tell Tanaka the truth, he pushed him to the ground and started kicking him hard. The rest of the women went to the colonel's office and requested to release Adrian. They said that when the soldier was at fault, why was Adrian punished? At first he did not agree, but when the women repeated it, he was forced to think and he freed Adrian. In the joy of Adrian's release, the women did the first show of the orchestra which left the eyes of the Japanese soldiers open. The soldiers were given orders to stop the orchestra, but they were so lost in the music that they forgot all the orders. Finally, some officers also clapped for the women. A few days later, all the prisoners were told that Japan is winning the war and now Australia also wants to join hands with them. As soon as he heard this, Susan's mouth was cursed. But Captain Tanaka had heard it. He called Susan to him and told the soldiers to tie her up in such a way that if she moves a little, her death is certain. Poor Susan sat in the scorching sun for many hours without water. The soldiers did not let anyone help her. Twenty-four hours passed and the captain came to her. He was very impressed to see her will to live and finally he released Susan. Now every night the women used to perform an orchestra for the colonel and sergeant. And after listening to them for so many days, they also became their fans. They even gave women two soap sticks as a reward. Wow, how kind these people are. It had been two years since those women had come there. One day they were taken to a different place where there were even fewer facilities. In fact, the truth was that Japan was losing the war. Now they didn't even have food for their soldiers. So what about the prisoners? On the way to the other place, Rosemary's eyes were on those prisoners who were being brought by the Japanese soldiers. One of them was her husband, who was surprised to see her. She knew that her husband would be killed now. She went crying all the way because she knew that she would never meet her husband again. After reaching the new place, they had to live in broken houses without mattresses. There was very little food there, so women had to eat wild snakes and animals to survive. Many women became very sick because of living in this miserable condition. Thinking about her husband's death, Rosemary's desire to live was completely over. She stopped eating. And she used to cry day and night. After some days she died. The farm next to her hut was now a cremation ground. In the end, only a few people were able to survive. They had forgotten how their life was before coming here. Finally, on August 24, 1945, the colonel came and told everyone that the war is over now. After that, all the Japanese soldiers freed them and left. All the women started dancing happily. This is a true story of the Second World War. And even after reaching home, they kept their relationship with their friends till their last breath. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.